What is up you guys? Tristan here, Ingram Orchids and More. And it is a rainy day here in South Central Florida. I apologize about being absent for so long. I'm gonna step away, it's getting rain on the camera. Uh, I apologize about being gone for so long. Uh, but as you know, um, me and Catherine work at uh, Palmer Orchids and we've been real busy as of late doing the uh, preparing for our summer tent sale that went really well and before that you know we just we had a lot of stuff going on and uh, the first thing to give is the, the YouTube videos not to say that we don't like doing the videos but um, sometimes in life you got to prioritize some things and uh, this is what had to had to give so but we're back today and hopefully I'll do a uh, more in-depth video but I wanted to show y'all guys real quick while it's raining I'm undercover here uh, but hopefully I can film this without getting too much too much rain and we've had I don't know about any other parts of uh, the country or the world but we've had so much rain that's another thing that happened while we were absent from YouTube is Hurricane Debbie came through and we got 18 inches of rainfall here over a very short couple days here when the storm passed and uh, it devastated uh, a lot of our local area here uh, we were very fortunate we did not have any severe flooding at our home here but others in our neighborhood did and we were actually trapped in our our home for about 24 hours there was so much water on the roads uh, that it was pretty much impassable um, I have a pickup truck and so I could get through you know a couple a foot of water or so in certain areas uh, but there was so much rain in such a short amount of time that our little area of uh, Florida here had severe flooding and uh, that was uh, that was not fun and to make a long story short the plants did not like it either so you know we joke about everything being dehydrated all the time uh, but the exact opposite happens here in Florida. You know, we get these hurricanes and tropical weather systems that come through. And just like today, you can just randomly just get a whole bunch of rain. And 18 inches of rain, guys, is a lot of rain for these plants. So the plants that were outside stayed wet for extended periods of time. And me being the bad orchid parent that I was, being gone in Georgia and all that and having so much going on, I was I was a bad orchid parent, guys. I did not apply my fungicides, and even though that makes me a big hypocrite because I come on here and you know give everybody advice about how to properly apply you know fungicides and pesticides, and I do advocate for for doing that. Uh, I was not. I was very behind on it, and uh, 18 inches of rainfall took a toll, and so quite a lot of our plants to come uh, you know came down with. Uh, some water mold, some black rot, which are caused by, you know, oh my seeds. Uh, they thrive in these wet conditions, and sure enough, a couple days after the rains uh, let up, we started noticing the signs. But that was all my fault. Um, that could have been completely avoided by keeping up with my routine fungicide applications. Uh, but that's been kind of depressing, having to throw a lot of plants away. And just dealing with that and uh, you know it's it's not fun you know having these diseases in your collection and dealing with them but we'll make another video on that because I as sad as it is for me I would like to explain a little bit about it. Ooh, that was a good lightning flash we might get struck by lightning if that's if that happens so be it it was meant to be but We'll make another video about the black rock because I would like to inform y'all about it because it's it needs to be it needs to be shown you know and it's not always just the had a hair in my eye uh, it's not just the good there's also the bad so I'd like to make a video about that so stay tuned I'll make a video about black rock but uh, without further ado I'd like to now turn the attention of this video towards a spotlight so here we have. A very very pretty encyclia. This is encyclia dichroma and I'm now wondering if y'all can hear me over the sound of the rain. 
But this is Encyclia dichroma. This one comes from Brazil, I believe. This is a mostly a lithophytic species. It's very closely related to uh, Encyclia genitiana. I think that's how you pronounce it. Very similar species, they look very similar. But this one here is dichroma. It's a beautiful pink lavender with that dark purple lip. I'm hoping it's gonna focus on the, on the flower. But this is one that I got from a friend who picked it up at one of the uh, international shows as a Beirut division a couple years ago. I've had it in this pot with lava rock for the last couple years and it's doing wonderfully. You can see it's stacking itself up high. Uh, that seems a little unsightly, but these lithophytic species, they tend to do that. You'll notice that they'll just, they, they kind of stack up on themselves. I don't really know what that's about. Um, I have some ideas, but they're just ideas. But this plant is doing really well. I don't do much to this plant. It hangs out here with my more miscellaneous orchids. You know, I have a lot more of the smaller or just bizarre species just sitting up here on this bench. And man, it's really starting to come down. Not ideal filming conditions, but when you have the time to film, guys, you're gonna have to make it happen, whether it's raining or not. I'm trying to get this stupid vine off of it so I can turn it. I have a... There we go. There's a Deshidia vine growing over here, and I should never have left it up here because now it's growing all over everything. But now I've turned it so y'all can see it a little bit better. So in Cichlea dichroma, guys, it's a very well-adjusted plant for Florida's climate because it likes it hot, it likes it bright, like I said, it's a lithospitic, lithospitic species. Sorry guys, can't speak today. Uh, so I do grow it in lava rock and it, it's happy just like that. This plant could, this plant could stand to have a little more light up here with this stuff. It gets afternoon sun because the sun goes across here. Um, I think it could stand to have a little more light. This plant really reaches for the sun. You could see the way it was turned. It, it was reaching for the sunlight when it was blooming. And I think it could stand to have a little more light, but it bloomed nonetheless. So there's unfortunately no smell to this species. Most Encyclia species are very fragrant. Uh, this is one of the species that is not. I think the uh, description for this species may list a fragrance, but to me, I have yet to come across one that has a smell. Or if it is fragrant, it's not fragrant enough for me to detect it. Maybe somebody with a little bit more sensitive nose could smell it. Yeah, I just gave it a whiff. I'm not smelling anything. Now this is one plant that you will definitely need to keep an eye out for rot. And one of the reasons this one has not succumbed to the 18 inches of rain that we had and the rain that we've had since Hurricane Debbie uh, is because it's actually underneath the overhang here. So the lanai screen starts there, but the eave and everything is right here, and it's actually covered, so some rain that comes in can get to the plant, uh, but usually the only water that plant gets is from me watering it with a hose. Like right now, it's getting just misted because the rain is, the wind is whipping it up. But I keep it here intentionally just to keep this plant drier. I'm not saying that this plant needs no water, uh, but being a lithophyte from the hot parts of Brazil, it does not want our torrential downpours that we get here in our summer. Um, it would be very, very easy to lose this to rot if you were not careful. And I, I do treat this upstairs here. It's a lot easier to get to with the fungicide. So I do come through with like van rot, heritage, and some good stuff. And just douse everything with a good fungicide treatment. Um, I had a little bit of black rot up here on a Cattleya Maxima, let's see, it was exposed to the rain. I think I have uh, successfully stopped it, or at least slowed it down. I removed the lead that had the black rot um, and treated this with a uh, Ritamil and Van Rot. So yeah, underneath the sheath here, it is green. So I think the black rot has ceased. 
But that's not what this video is about. We're gonna do another video on Black Rock. But I just wanted to give y'all a quick update and a quick spotlight on one of my favorite, I say one favorite. This one's not one of my top five favorite, but I think it's a lovely species. I definitely like it more than I like a lot of other things. Uh, y'all, if y'all know me, I like Certipodiums. I love Encyclias. I love Schomburgias or Myrmecophilus. Um, and this one, this one is just unique in the Encyclia world because it has that really, really bright pink. Another one that has that really bright pink is Encyclia denicola. Anybody who knows me knows I love a denicola, but I can't grow it. I've tried, I've grown and killed so many of them. They just don't like me and my Florida climate. Uh, so this is the pink species that I can, I can grow and get away with. Encyclia dichroma. All right guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I apologize about being absent for so long. Hopefully I'll become a little more frequent with the videos here. But like I said, I work professionally with orchids and sometimes, you know, you work with orchids all day and you come home and uh, you've had all the orchids you want to talk about for the day. And, you know, sometimes it just it doesn't seem like a big priority, but I'll try and make the videos a little bit more of a priority going forward. So thanks for watching guys. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.